Ooh. What, what did you get? What did you get? A gift. <laughs> and we have a gift for you. Another episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Garden Gallery Ironworks, where next Saturday there will be lots of festivities going on for Mother's Day. And by the way, William, what you get? Oh, Judy, I got the brand new Garden Time Dahlia from Ooh. Swan Island Dahlias. And also next week at Garden Gallery Ironworks, they're going to be giving away six of the brand new Garden Time Roses from Heirloom Roses. Coming up in the show later, we'll be talking with Nick about how to plant the dahlias to get the best blooms in August. Also coming up on the show today, we are going to be showing you some of the best vines for your garden. But coming up first, how to take care of those weeds in your lawn. So I'm standing here with Tom Combs and you are a bonide, right Tom? Correct. So we're going to be talking about things that are happening at this time of year, which is an explosion of growth. Unfortunately, sometimes there's things growing that we don't want and a lot of times they appear in our lawns. Yes, so they are. first of all, let's talk about some of the weeds that really are populating our lawns at this time of year. You have a selection of them here, I see. I do, <laughs> I do in my own yard, matter of fact. Uh, with the warm weather we've had and uh, some recent rains, um, a lot of the broadleaf weeds and grassy weeds are actively growing in yeah. our turf grasses, as you can see here. Um, so we've got, we've got some weedy grasses going here. This is commonly known as annual bluegrass. You can identify it with the little seed capsule okay. that it sets at a very low um, height. And uh, over time, it can overtake your turf grasses. And we've got some products that we're going to demonstrate today and show you. Other things that are going on in the turf is um, plantain. This is a very common broadleaf weed. Yeah. And then we've got some dandelions popping over here. That had a flower on it a few days ago. <laughs> so as you can see, a lot of uh, weeds in general growing in our in our turf grass. So what is the product that you're going to be showing us today? Tell us about that. So we've got a product here from Bonide. Uh, it's called Weed Beater uh, Plus and uh, comes in a number of different sizes. The one in my hand is a ready to use. So it's pre-mixed. You just pull the trigger and do some spot spraying. Nice. Excellent for small areas. And then the other size is what I call a hose and go mm -hmm. or a ready to spray. And uh, the garden hose goes here on this side has an on and off switch and then a fan tip. So that'll spray about 25 feet in a nice even uh, fan um, pattern as it comes out. So it seems like this would be a pretty easy way to take care of your lawn, but why don't you show us like how you would actually apply it? Love to. Okay, Tom, now I was watching you do that, and I first of all, I saw that this is really, really easy, but let's be realistic. You, you don't want to do it if you have like more than 12 plants in a space. Correct. I mean, 12 weeds in a space. Correct. So now the easier thing to do, though, is the spray and go if you have an entire lawn to do. Tell me some of the tips that you followed while doing that. Yeah, great point. So on the 32 ounce ready to use, the one on your hand, that would be just for some small areas. Yeah. Maybe you have six to eight, 12 weeds. Again, small areas, that would be a good choice. Um, the one in my hand with the hose connected to it would be for much larger turf areas, say uh, a thousand square feet or bigger. Okay. Then you have, again, both grassy weeds and broadleaf weeds. Um, with the normal uh, water pressure at the hose bib, as you can see, this will throw about 25 feet. Yeah. Um, but be careful, you know, this is a weed killer. It is a weed beater, Yeah. Uh, but it also would harm ornamental plants. So okay. as you can see, as I applied this, I was very careful of not getting it on the ornamental plants. So Tom, I noticed that you were walking backwards as you sprayed that. Yeah, great point, and I'm glad you noticed. So a product like this, we don't want to be walking through what we've applied. So I walked to the very furthest point out in my yard, turned it on, and then walked backwards. Okay, and what about temperature? Temperature is key, uh, because now we're having uh, daytime temperatures of 65 and above. Yeah. And for this product, these active ingredients, we need that. We need temperatures of 65 and above. Okay. We also want to be cautious not to be spraying when it's ex extreme heat. 
and that would be 80 and above. Okay. Now, if we're forecasting uh, 80 and above, we can still go out in the morning and spray this, but just don't do it during the heat. Because I would think it does need a, a dry time before rain or sprinklers yes. hit it again. Yeah, and this time of year, uh, you know, the weather patterns can be very unpredictable. Yeah. So this does need five hours of dry weather after it's applied to be effective. Perfect. Well, you know, if, if it's that time of year, you're out in your garden, you're going, oh my good, look, look at my lawn, I've got to do something with it. Uh, you can go to gardentime.tv, we'll click you over to the Bonite website. You can find out where these beauties are sold, make your lawn perfect for those summertime parties. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you. Success in the garden starts with the right plant in the right place. Farmington Gardens can help you succeed in planting and selecting for any corner of your garden. Spring is a fantastic time of year. Colorful, fresh, fragrant. And Farmington Gardens will help you revitalize your garden. So let's get started. We're here to help. Open every day and just a short drive out Farmington Road. Farmington Gardens, we're growing for you. Cultivate your desire to learn. Give your learning deeper roots with Garden University at the Oregon Garden. Join us for a variety of lectures, demonstrations, and workshops hosted by experts in the field. Get a garden-inspired lesson in the art of paper folding. Learn how to make origami flowers, birds, and butterflies just in time for Mother's Day. Help your garden and your mind grow through Garden University at the Oregon Garden. Contact the Oregon Garden for more information or visit OregonGarden.org. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terracasa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terracasa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terracasa. Terracasa in downtown Damascus. So Judy and I are just finishing up planting this new raised bed that our, that our good friend Al built. And you know, Judy, what an easy way to put a raised garden in to, is to build it yourself. It is, and really I think the best part is you have fresh soil and you don't have to break your back trying to dig into the native soil here. This tomato is just too easy to plant. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. Now if you're interested in building one yourself, the steps really are quite easy. The first thing you do is just find a place in your yard that gets about six to eight hours of sun if you're doing vegetable gardens and try to get it as level as you can. You know, and when you do those measurements, you want to make sure that it fits and then also that it's not wider than four foot across because you don't want to be walking on that soil that you've just put in there. You want to keep that nice and fluffy. So you want to be able to make sure that you can reach that bed and all those plants from either side of the raised bed. Now once you get those steps down, the next thing is to clear out the sod. If there's lawn there, if there's a bunch of weeds, whatever the case may be, Take all that out, and I would do a little tilling of the soil then, just to fluff it up. Once the old sod is out, you want to stake out the exact configuration of the raised bed because you want to make sure that you're right on track with what you have to cut. You know that old adage of you measure twice and cut once because you don't want to make any mistakes once you start cutting the boards. That's true, and also you really don't want to use a two by four, Judy. You want to go with a two by six or a two by eight so you get the depth that you're looking for for the new raised bed. Next, Judy, what he did was, was take brass screws and screwed all the pieces together, making sure that it was square. And you know, he added those extra braces inside all of the corners because it's really gonna have a lot of extra support for those edges. Next, what you do is you wanna make sure it's level again, so he checked all the levels, made sure everything was copacetic. <laughs> 
And now this is the perfect time to use some of that old soil that's inside the frame to backfill on the outside of the frame because you have a little trench there from all your work. Yeah. Now next, Judy, you know, we've used black gold all organic because this is a vegetable garden and you don't want to backfill with existing soil. You want it to be nice, fresh, clean soil. So we use the black gold. Now you might have a big enough bed too that you want to think about getting a bulk delivery, you know, brought to your house. You know, a place like Grimm's is a great place to get something like that. Now that all that work is done, now you get to plant your plants. <laughs> and this really is the easiest part because you have this nice fluffy soil to play in. It's really, and it's the funnest part too to me. <laughs> and then once everything's planted, you want to make sure that you give it a good deep watering because chances are the soil isn't going to have any moisture in it. So you want to make sure that you have a lot of water for those new roots. You know, Al made this kind of fancy configuration <laughs> in L shape, but you don't have to get that fancy. You can really just get a simple square. And we have one over here to show you. The great thing is, Judy, several independent garden centers will carry these garden kits. They're pre-made, they're pre-cut. It is so simple to put together, like this one from Al's. All you do is just place it together, it's pre-drilled, take the rebar and then hammer it into the ground. It oh. couldn't be any simpler. All you have to do is really add the soil and plant water and you're ready to go. It's true. So for more information on building your own raised bed, we invite you to go to gardentime.tv. I'm at Swan Island Dahlias with Nick, and Nick, this is the time to plant dahlias. It's so exciting. Finally, we have some nice <laughs> weather. Yeah, it's time to plant. Okay, so what do we do with the, with the dahlia tubers? It's like, I noticed that you guys are planting, and you're not taking a lot of precision to plant those tubers. Dahlias aren't too picky because the eye will find its way up, no matter which way it's up or down. But you can see they come in all shapes and mm -hmm. sizes. So if they're really long and thin, we always say to lay the flat, Perfect. tuber flat, so you don't have the head too high or okay. too low. So usually about six inches deep, laying flat, and like I said, the eye will turn around and come up no matter what. If you can see the eye, oh, see that's right great, there. Okay. but if, if it were laying down, it would turn around and come right back up. All right, are you going to show us? Can we like, sure. dig a hole sure. and we can put one on in here? Yeah, I'll just get the shovel here. And get... So if we don't have canby soil, which is so gorgeous, add some compost in? Yeah, just be careful if the compost is not too high in nitrogen. Okay. Uh, steer manure, bag steer manure is really good. Okay. Um, we always recommend a little handful of bone meal. All right. You and know, in the hole, work it in a little bit. About four inches or yeah, so down? Yeah, anywhere from four to six. Okay. Yeah. And like I was saying, if the tuber lays flat, because we don't want to do this. Okay. And we don't want to do that. All right. So you just would lay the tuber flat and then basically cover it back up. Okay. You know. What's the stake for? This is to tie it to. Okay. So if, you, if you're going to end up growing a dahlia that's over three feet tall, okay. then you're going to want to have a stake to tie it as a support as it goes up. All right. Some people use tomato cages. Um, there's all different ways of you know, building uh, racks around them, but the stake works quite well. You can just tie a string around as it gets larger. And I like to put my stake in now because if you do it later, you might go right through the tuber and that's a bad thing and I've done that. So it's a really good idea to put it in when you're planting so you know exactly where that tuber is. Correctly, correct. Yeah, we always do that. You know, if you're planting them individually, put your stake in first. All right. So, Nick, these will even bloom this summer. Right. Most people are really shocked that a dahlia grows as fast as it does. Mm -hmm. most, most bulbs you put in the fall, the dahlias right. go in the spring. And so we have dirt fields out here, nothing. <laughs> and in, you know, late July to August, things start blooming and then they bloom all through fall. So dahlia grows quite fast. So right. you get a big, a big plant in a hurry. Yeah, and it's not too late, really. You can go on your website and order and get them really soon and get them in the ground for, for bloom this season. Right, we still, we ship through uh, the first week of June. And actually we're starting to plant out here now and we won't finish planting until the end of May or oh, even the wow. first week of June. And a lot of times the ones that are planted later almost catch up with the early ones because sure. of the temperature of the soil. They come up much faster and catch up. So ah. there's plenty of time. I'm taking lots of orders right now. Oh, well, great. Well, you can go on to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to Swan Island Dahlias and get out there and get your dahlias and plant them. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. Based on reviews, I found Capital. It was an excellent experience. I felt very comfortable, especially being a single woman. Take on just about anything this spring in the new 2016 Subaru Crosstrek Hybrid CVT, the most fuel efficient all wheel drive hybrid crossover in America. Lease just $199 per month at Capital. When I hear stories from other people about car buying experiences, they're horror stories. And mine, I just left with a big smile and I've been smiling ever since. I got it my way on the parkway. 
At French Prairie Perennials, we take pride at being different. From rare, unique, and unusual plant material and handcrafted garden art to our visual scaping program, we can help you create an outdoor living space as unique as you are. Our gift shop has home and garden decor and gifts for all occasions. Visit us at our new location in Aurora, a quick drive from Portland off I-5. French Prairie Perennials, outdoor living elevated. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Since 1926, Bonide has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Tired of sharing your garden with the local deer? Try new Sentinel Deer Repellent System from Bonide. Sentinel protects the entire plant and won't wash off with rain. Plus, it's people and pet friendly. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Judy, yep. do you remember when I asked you if you liked me? I mean, if you really liked me? Yeah, I liked you on Facebook. Yeah, well, I need you to do that again. Well, we really need everyone to like the new Facebook page for Garden Time. So you just go to gardentime.tv and click on the Facebook icon and like us again for our brand new page. Garden Time's Incredible Edibles! <laughs> So I am in a really beautiful garden. I'm here with Sace Jung. How are you, Sace? Good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. And we're going to be talking about bamboo because throughout your garden here at your home, you have some amazing bamboo stands and there's something that you do with them every spring. So what is that? Oh, well, I, you know, they kind of take over the yard. So I just pretty much ideally pick them when they're three to five inches. And what do you do with them then? Well, I would, uh, peel them with a paring knife and then I would grill them, marinate them, grill them. Very simple stuff. Really? So, yeah. and that would be a, way, a great way to con control the bamboo, Definitely. isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> so <laughs> now, when you over. say that you, you pick them, is there a, first of all, I would think, is there a specific variety of bamboo that you grow that you eat or any of it? Uh, I usually prefer the more slender kind, like the ones we have right here, the Bissetti bamboo, and uh -huh. so they're slender and they're a little bit early in the spring, so it's very easy to uh, peel and grill them. So that's the kind you like, but you can actually do any of the bamboo at all around here? Definitely, any bamboo, uh-huh. Now, I'm sure there's a process of like how tall they have to be, how much you cut off. Show us what you do to get them. So what ideally you would want the bamboo to be three to five inches and uh -huh. you can just break right off oh, there. Oh, that so was easy. it's very easy to do. So that's what you do. And like over here, there's some taller ones. Would you still take those as well? Ideally three to five inches, but you can take them off. You just have to discard the lower part. Ideally, you still would want to use three to five inches of, of the that. bamboo. Yeah. So now what we're going to do with these is do some grilling on them, right? That's right. So let's walk over to the grill and Sounds start that up. Okay, thanks. Okay, Sace, now we're at the grill, but I'm assuming you don't just throw them on the grill like this. No, do you? you don't. So what do you do to, to You actually ready? would get a paring knife. The best way to do is cut about three, two, two to three inches off the top here. Okay. You want to cut there and make a cut right from the top through the base of the chutes itself. Uh -huh. And then you want to just peel it off here. Oh, oh. So it's very simple. So you're really just peeling off the external leaf structure yes. of it. Yes, and the more tender leaves on the top, you can still use it about there. Okay. So that's fine. That's all you need to do. And then that. what's the next step? The next step I like to do is just do a simple grill. I would like to marinate it in uh, olive oil. Okay. And then we have salt and pepper here. Uh huh. And then we have some sesame oil to give it a little bit added flavor. Sure. And also I like to add toasted or untoasted sesame seed oh. to give that even extra flavor. Okay. So what you would do is just put the bamboo in here. And, and this is all stuff that you've picked in your own yard. Isn't yes, it? definitely. Okay. These are the bisetti. These are actually the black bamboo uh -huh. itself. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So you want to just drizzle, get some extra olive oil, virgin olive oil, drill, you drizzle it on, That's... and then you want to 
crush, uh, grind up some peppers mm -hmm. all the way through. Generous amount, I prefer that. It tastes a little bit, I think, better. And then just some ground black peppers. And then some olive oil. Is that olive oil? I'm sorry. This is actually <laughs> sesame oil. Is, there you <laughs> so you're using sesame and olive oil both. Yes. Okay. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of sesame oil. It's kind of strong. So okay. a little bit goes a long way. And then you want to just sprinkle some sesame seed. As I mentioned, you can use toasted or untoasted okay. sesame seed. It doesn't matter. So you do that before any of the grilling starts? Yes. And, and then, then do you set it for a while or? No, you don't need to actually. It's very quick. You just kind of need to stir it up a little bit here. Okay. So it's all mixed up. And what do you have the grill set on? The grill is on medium. Okay. And then you want to do it about three minutes on each side. Of course, it depends. If you have a more slender bamboo, you can actually a little bit less than three minutes on each side. If it's a little bit thicker, it'll take a little bit longer. So you might want to check on. Well, I'm so going to take this burn. over and let you put them on the grill All real right. quick. Sounds good. And then you just lay them now on also like you would. Like, when you lay it on, you want to put it across the opposite direction of the, the, the grill. Oh, because slender ones would fall through. It would they? fall right through. <laughs> so if you have the slender ones, you want to put some grilling basket underneath okay. it so it does not fall through. So All right, well, we're going to put okay. those on and then we'll let them cook and we'll be right back. Sounds good. So, Sace, we have been about three minutes now, yes, right? Yes, it's been three and minutes. And it's time to flip them. Uh-huh. And that's all you do is just turn them over. Yep, look just at turn that. them all one by one. They look like they're getting a little bit nice and brown. Yeah. Now, now as, as you do this and the rest of them continue to cook, um, you and your family have a great market on Weedler. Tell me about that. We do. It it's on Weidler and Halsey side either way. Uh -huh. um, it's called Lily Market. And what, what does it have? We have, we specialize in Asian food, uh, Thai food actually, Asian food, Thai, especially Thai, and we do retail, wholesale, and hot deli also. Well, so then I would expect that a lot of the stuff we used here and the flavors and things could be purchased there as well. Definitely, you can get anything from olive oil to sesame oil, so anything yeah. like that, yeah. And I also see that you have a couple of pieces of meat. What is the meat on the plate? There? Those are actually lemongrass honey pork. Oh, I mean. okay. It's a little bit spicy, it has a little bit of kick to it. And this is going to be served with that? Yes, it's a great uh, side dish, the bamboo shoot itself. It's a great substitution for asparagus. Oh, oh, so, okay. Yes. Well, yeah, it actually kind of looks like asparagus. Yes, it, it is like asparagus. It cooks probably twice as long as asparagus, but it's got a little bit crunchier flavor to uh -huh. it, taste to it. And when do I get to try one? Right now, I oh, guess. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's ready here. It so does indeed. We'll plate it here real quick, some of it. And then I like the more slender one. I think it's much crispier and uh -huh. has that barbecue grill. So. So okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use my finger. Yes. Hand me that one right there. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's try this now. Eh? Oh my. Is it good? And it has a barbecue. Oh my. That is really good. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite things in the spring. Well, you know, this is a great recipe, and Sace has, has delighted me by cooking it for us today. <laughs> so you can go to GardenTime.tv. We can click you over to their market. You can go in there and get some great food, some great things to make this yourself. And if you have bamboo, or even if your neighbors do, I bet they would let you cut some of this. Try barbecuing <laughs> it for yourself. Safe, delicious. Thank you so great. much for Thank sharing this with coming, us. Thank you for coming, William. You're Thanks. welcome. <laughs>
Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Celebrate a spring tradition, visit the Old Eclager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs, tour Holda's Victorian home and gift shop. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. Your garden is only as good as the ingredients you use. Black Gold can help. Black Gold all-purpose potting soil will provide moisture retention and good drainage. Plus, it is formulated with a controlled release fertilizer, so it will feed your plants up to six months so you don't have to. Look for Black Gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. I'm at Timber Press with Tom today, and Tom, this is really the spring push for publishing books. It really is. This is the time of year, Judy, that everyone likes to get out there and plant stuff. So we have a lot of exciting plant books, we have some how-to books, and then some that are just a little different. Yeah, so let's start with this one. Sure. Um, Garden Evolution. Garden Revolution. Revolution. Uh, How Our Landscapes Can Be a Source of Environmental Change by Larry Weiner and Thomas Christopher. Um, Larry Weiner is a really well-known a garden designer and landscape architect in the Northeast. His specialty is creating meadows out of native plants. Oh, and beautiful. what he does in this book is show you how ecological processes can be harnessed to create your landscape so that you don't have to fight weeds, so that the plants themselves are self-sustaining and self-perpetuating, and you wind up with these amazing tapestries of plants that are that are behaving the way they would in a natural um, situation. But it's a it's a cultivated, planted, uh, landscape and so he's he tells you exactly how to go about this if you want to do it and sh tells you all the environmental advantages that come from doing this kind of planting that sounds really different because usually we want to make order of something but to make it just a little bit looser it would be very calming for you it is and yeah. he debunks all sorts of gardening myths such as uh, how you weed you know most <laughs> of us go around we pull the whole thing up and we want to get the root he says don't do that oh. because you bring new weed seeds to the surface and you just make yourself more work. <laughs> Cut them off if you can and then the root stays buried. You don't stir up new weed seeds and you have far fewer problems down the road. Ah, but that's a tip everybody could use. Yeah. <laughs> And aromatherapy gardening, I mean, that is really, really something nice for our soul. So many people are into aromatherapy these days, and this tells you how to grow all the plants that have these wonderful scents mm -hmm. that can calm your mood or, you know, get you energized or whatever it is you're looking for. And it's interesting, it's not just the plants we think of as being fragrant like gardenias and lily of the valley and lilacs. There are interesting things as well like balsam fir and yarrow and things with pungent smells mm -hmm. that we don't always associate with, with a fragrant garden. And there's great information on how to grow them, how to use them, what effects they have, uh, how to make potpourri and teas and other kinds of herbal preparations, all with, interspersed with all sorts of helpful growing advice and just observations on how aroma can make us happier and more <laughs> serene. We all need that, don't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> you sure do. Take that stress out of our lives. And then for the um, chefs in us. Yes, uh, the culinary herbal. Um, by Susan Belsinger and Arthur, Tuck, Arthur Tucker. Uh, this is a great compendium on just about every important culinary herb there is. Um, what I really like about it is that it tells you about the various cultivars and varieties of each herb. Mm. So if you want an herb for a particular purpose, you can find it here. Say you, you have a little, you want some thyme in your garden. Mm -hmm. What variety is going to be the best one for so you? Many. French thyme, mm -hmm. English thyme, lemon thyme. So it'll tell you what will work best for you, and especially with other popular herbs like basil and sage and rosemary and lavender, which is mm. extremely popular. Just great information. Also good information about harvesting the herbs and preserving them so to keep their flavor at their peak. Ah, uh, really a nice how-to book because sometimes you, the drying is different per herb. Yeah. And it's like it's going to be all in ha that book. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And then for the project people. Yes, this is for the project people and the do-it-yourselfers. Hand-built outdoor furniture. Uh, 20 step-by-step -step projects anyone can build by Katie Jackson. And when it says anyone can build, it really is true. 
uh, the step-by-step -step photographs show you exactly how to measure, how to cut, oh, nice. um, how to nail it. I mean, I could do this. I'm terrible <laughs> I know with what you tools. Mean. <laughs> I mean, and, and there are lots of projects I would really like to make. I love this really bright chair on the cover it of the book. Nice, I mean, yeah. that's something I would love to have in my garden. And so the projects are doable. They're practical. They're attractive, and they're you know they'll make a do-it-yourself or e out of you even if you've never touched a hammer before. Uh, and that's nice because we have a weekend and we need a project, yeah. and really the whole thing is in there. And making your own furniture, outdoor furniture, is so much less expensive mm -hmm. than trying to buy it. Right, definitely. And now I heard that this is your favorite book this year. It is. All the President's Gardens, Madison's Cabbages to Kennedy's Roses, How the White House Grounds Have Grown with America by Marta McDowell, who wrote our wonderful book about Beatrix Potter. Mm. So this time Marta is telling the history of the White House grounds from the very early stages before the White House was even built. I mean, they were planning oh. it during Washington's administration, even though it wasn't built till several years later. But all the history about how the grounds have changed and developed, reflecting all the various trends and fads in American landscaping, as well as all the important historical events. And she's found all these delightful anecdotes oh, cool. about the various presidents and their wives and their families and their gardens, and about the individual gardeners who help make the grounds what they are today. And it's delightfully illustrated oh. with wonderful period illustrations. And I think that just about anyone with an interest in American history or the landscape will find this interesting. And it's a refreshing change in an election year. It's completely <laughs> nonpartisan. <laughs> sure. It really sort of reminds us what is wonderful in our shared uh, history and legacy. Right. You know, it's something for everyone to see. If you haven't been to Washington, D.C., what a lovely horticulture city to see. Exactly. From cherry blossoms to the gardens. You bet. Well, you know, you can go to Gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to Timber Press. You can find out where to get these books. You can even buy them online. Thanks so much for all the lovely titles this year. Oh, you're welcome, Judy. Thank you. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. You haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Surround yourself with wonderful color this summer. It's time for the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. Hydrangeas are the perfect plant for any garden, large or small. We are cleaning out our nursery, so come and take some plants home to your garden. We're offering special, once a year pricing on nearly everything we grow. Also, check out our selection of grasses and other blooming perennials. It's the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. So I'm standing here with Nancy and Lonnie and they are part of a garden club and at Garden Time we love to celebrate garden clubs because they do so much. So tell me about this place, Nancy. This is the Risley Landing. It was at the biggest riverboat landing on the entire Willamette River. This is where the Risleys and the entire pioneer people on the east side sent their goods to market. And it really is I mean, it is a garden club now. Which garden club is it? This is the Oak Grove Garden Club. And this place has such a rich history, and it really took a lot of time and effort, because when you guys kind of took over here, it was pretty much just covered with 
brambles. After the advent of the railroad, it was this landing with the river boats for the uh, travel was shut down completely for over a hundred years. And it has a lot of history here, doesn't it? Yes. The, uh, the people that owned it, they were the first legislators and educators of the Oak Grove area. And when did it actually become this garden? When did this really take over again? In 1983, it was willed to us in a, in a will by Hugh Starkweather, who was a nephew of the Risley family. And Nancy, now the Garden Club actually does maintain it and take care of it, don't they? Yes, uh, the entire Garden Club is out here working and maintaining the park. And now I'm, I'm going to switch over here to uh, Lonnie, sounds like Bonnie. So see, I remember, yeah. didn't I, Lonnie? Uh -huh. <laughs> so you guys have a great plant sale. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, that's one of our main fundraisers uh, for the park for maintenance. And we also give a scholarship to Clackamas Community College Horticultural nice. Department with the funds that we raise. Uh, the plant sale is the day before Mother's Day, Saturday, May 7th from 9 to 3 and it's, it's a fabulous event. But it's not the only way that you guys get money as well because you can actually rent this place out, can't you, for different events? Yes, it's a beautiful place to rent for weddings, reunions, company picnics, anything you can think of. So Nancy, what else can people look forward to seeing when they come out here? Well, first of all, I think that they would like to come up to the original depot where the people waited on and loaded their barges. The foundation is the still foundation there. The foundation is nice. still there. Also, we have our beautiful gazebo nice. that was paved with uh, um, bricks that we sold with their names on them. Uh -huh. And we were able to build the gazebo. Then as you look out towards the parking lot here, you see our beautiful cascading um, uh, gardens and all the different plants that we grow here. And those plants are divided and sold at our plant sale. And is there a, is there a website, Lonnie, that we can go to for more information about everything that goes on here? Oakgrovegardenclub.com. So, you know, this is wonderful because it really takes a great piece of our rich history here in Oregon and makes it absolutely attainable for people to go to and visit, to have events at, to buy plants at. For more information, we invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Ladies, thank you both so much. Well, we have a true kindergarten segment today. I am at Cloverdale School in Turner with Donna from Black Gold. And so, Donna, what's going on today? Oh, it's so fun here. We're making dirt babies. Oh, that's going to be so much fun. So walk us through the steps. Okay, so first you take a, a knee-high pantyhose and you put grass seed in the bottom. Okay, so like in the toes, we're going to put right. a scoop of just any kind of um, grass seed? Yes, grass seed. Um, and then we're going to use uh, Black Gold Organic today to fill up and make a ball and when we flip this over that grass is going to grow so that's what we're doing today and, and i and i have to show the artists here because we had some kids drawing and so they kind of designed their dirt baby before they started even that's right this is the project we split everybody into three groups so we had everybody busy at the same time. Right, right. Well, this is kind of a crazy, I mean, it's a lot of kids here a lot in this of kids, kindergarten. But it's a fun project. It is. So, Donna, once the sock is all filled with soil and we tie it off, then what do we do? Then we go and decorate. Uh, so, what was decorating? Uh, faces or eyes or noses or whatever the kids pick out. We'll have to go look to see how they're doing. Oh, I, it, their creativity shines through. It, it does. <laughs> So Donna, we have the other station where we're putting on all the decorations. So what's happening right. here? This is where we need adult help mm. because you really need to glue all the attachments on with a hot glue gun so it withstands the moisture that's going to be um, in the jar. And then what do we do for care? Okay, what we do is we put it in a, a jar or a vase filled with water with the tail going in. And what the water does is wicks up through the tail and keeps that moisture and grows grass from here. Uh, and then I see you have some kind of papers. This is all the directions if we want to make more. This is the directions and they're going to be on your website. And there's also a birth certificate. The kids get to name them today and put down the date that they were created and the first haircut. Oh, too funny. Well, now I want to talk to the kindergarten teacher here at Cloverdale. And this is Carol. And Carol, yes. so what does this teach the kids? 
it's really important for kids to have hands-on opportunities and to, to learn about plants and growth and what do we need. We've studied this before in January in their new curriculum, but now they have an opportunity to, to, um, to participate and have something at home with them. And watching the grass grow is going to be so awesome. And some will want their grass to grow tall and some want to have short haircuts. So we thank you very much, um, Donna, for giving us that opportunity to um, plant and uh, the care of the seeds, thank you. Well, it really is a fun project. You know, Mother's Day is right around the corner. This would be a great family project. You can go to um, any of your independent garden centers, pick up your black gold, get some grass seed, and you can make these at home and have a really great family project right for Mother's Day. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for all you do, and thank you, Donna. Look at your home. Winter left behind grungy stained decks, walks, siding and lawn furniture. You know they look awful. Clean them all today with the original and still the best 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. Since 1977, 30 Seconds has delivered clean when you want it clean. Easy to use, spray it on, wait, then hose away winter dirt, grime and stains from algae and mold. From our family to yours, thank you for buying 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. Find it at leading home stores and garden centers. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete too. From bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja chimney. We have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden, deck, or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook, too. Subaru Garden Days are here again. Join us at Capital Subaru in Salem for a day filled with fun plants and garden art. There will be free seeds, plants, and hot dogs. You could win a $100 gift card from Al's Garden Center or a $50 gift card from Drake 7Ds. See you at Subaru Garden Days. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Al's Garden Center. Grow your own herbs and veggies and enjoy healthy meals all summer long. With minimal space and effort, our starts are fresh from our local farm, grown all naturally and GMO free. And right now, when you buy three, you get three free. Limit three free per customer. Over 150 varieties to choose from. Start your garden today. Al's Garden Centers in Woodburn, Sherwood, and Gresham. <laughs> what are you looking for? Judy, I'm looking for the Garden Time Subaru. William, it's right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find it too. It's as easy as going to Gardentime.tv. So click on Gardentime.tv and click on the Subaru. Each month the Subaru will be in a different location. Give us your best guess and you could possibly win. Each month, one lucky person will be chosen from all the correct answers. Prizes can include a gift card to a great nursery, some wonderful tools, or other sweet prizes. So go to Gardentime.tv and help us find the Subaru. So it is a real delight to be up at the beautiful Sagawa Nursery in Woodland, Washington. I'm, I'm here with uh, you, Brian, and we're going to be talking about vines because they really a lot of people are interested in vines, it seems like, lately. Yeah, it seems like this year, um, more than ever, we seem to be getting a lot of calls. Uh, vines uh, maybe attracting hummingbirds and wildlife, yeah. or what can I do with my fence? Uh, vines are always a, a good fill. I mean, they cover a large area. They usually are pretty easily managed, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just a little pruning and keep them under so control. So let's, let's just jump right in. Tell me about this one, because it, it kind of looks like some kind of a honeysuckle. That's right. Um, this one was mandarin. Uh, uh, it's just a great honeysuckle with that orangish, pretty much bright orange to yellow. But, you know, the tuber flower pretty yeah. much will always be a great attraction for the hummingbirds. Well, and, you know, I remember when, when I was young, which was so long ago, the only real honeysuckle we had was just the beautiful fragrant halls, which was kind right. of a white. But they've done some amazing work on the colors now. Oh, yeah. There's, uh, I don't know how many new ones there are there, but they've been some new releases with some of these fancy names and stuff. But bottom line, there's just, they're such a versatile vine, you know, many yeah. different colors. Um, they usually are going to be partially deciduous or all yeah, fully losing all their leaves. But uh, 
you can see the aggressiveness. Just this year, you got this great spurge of growth that would fill out. So, a if you want to cover area. a lot of space quick, this would be an option for this you. This would be on the top, and full top sun? five list. You bet. Yeah, they can right. go full the parts. And speaking of plants, though, that that don't want sun. This is a clematis, but it can actually tolerate some That's shade. That's right. I, you know, evergreen clematis, uh, fragrant flowers. Uh, there's a couple of varieties with them, you know, that are offered. But bottom line, evergreen, so kind of susceptible to some of those harsh winter conditions. Yeah. But outside of that, this it's a winner because it really does. It covers just like the regular clematis. Uh, does keep its leaves. There's not too many evergreen vines out there. No, there really isn't. Them. That's so true. That's a, and that's, that's a, a wonder. But then, of course, you still have a good selection of the regular clematis that's that correct. we're used to. Yep. A lot of people, you know, mix and intertwine, have a couple different colors. Uh, kind of, you can get some bloom times. Uh, you can get some fragrances. But... Any two clematis uh, is a great mix. I mean, and that makes sense because you can also have like I know that the evergreen tends to bloom kind of early, early yes. so you could even have a longer bloom time that if you mix be, them up. You could have a very long uh, bloom schedule on it to fill fill your ball trellis or whatever you're trying to do. Now, Brian, tell me about this because I, I love it. I love that it. I thought I saw. Oh, there are some blooms right there coming on it already. Yep. Uh, Akebia vines, there's probably, I don't know, we carry like two or three varieties and I'm sure there's many more, but uh, it is a great, it's, to me that's just an attractive foliage, you know, what is it, got the little five petals yeah. on there, and uh, I, to me it's just nice, what we would call just a nice cheery little foliage on it, it doesn't really have too broad a leaf, but uh, I, the foliage alone is pretty nice on it. And that's the growth so far. That would since be you've so had, that's, far. That's a lot. <laughs> yes, it is. That would be just from, uh, you know, this spring's growth, and it's got all summer long, so you can see another two to three feet of uh, growth to follow after that. And then, of course, it's hard to, to not think about wisterias, wisterias when you see vines. Um, you know, another versatile plant. You can actually get a tree form out of this. You know, sometimes you can either... Uh, put a stake on it, get a nice little three, four, five foot standard on it, let all your side branches come off. And, and look at this, this one almost is already yep. a tree form. It, it's it's got it is, they are grafted forms of wisteria too, yeah. most of them. And those, those probably is, has something to do with the, the blooming uh, of the wisterias. Um, versus seed grown or cutting grown, yeah. uh, the grafted wisterias will give you a, probably a little more advantage of getting this much flower off them. And then I noticed this, and I, w I would be remiss if I didn't bring up jasmine. Oh, yeah. This is, is a jasmine, That's, right? Yep, that is. That's probably the most uh, fragrant of all the vines. You know, it would have to definitely be. Um, there's a lot of jasmines again, but this is the white star jasmine. Probably the, the best chance of having a jasmine do well. Protected area, you know, another evergreen uh, foliage. So you're going to have them harsh conditions that usually beat up the foliage pretty good. But, you know, a normal winter. It looks and the fine. fragrance is worth any oh, effort yeah. you have to put in. Yeah. Now, I wanted to go over about some of the ways, because a lot of times I've heard, you know, different uh, viewers say, well, I go in and they give me much too small of a, of a trellis. So right. you really need to think about the size of vines before you get trellises, yeah, right? For freestanding, you know, you can stake them. You could, uh, there's all sorts of support systems out there. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a miniature version. I mean, it's what, three foot tall, because you're going to poke that in the ground. Yeah. But yeah, there's obelisks, there's, I mean, on and on and on these different type of shapes. But one thing to think about is if they are deciduous, you're going to see nothing in the winter unless you have a track. Something little, to see underneath that's it. That's right. And then I've got to bring this up because, uh, of course, I knew your mother, Mabel, yeah, years ago. Yes. And <laughs> this was literally her wisteria, wasn't it? It, it? <laughs> is the trademark for uh, my mother there. She Actually, it was a uh, lost wisteria from uh, many seasons ago that was uh, overgrown and didn't know what to do with it. And it was, a salesperson was asked, do something with this. And so the idea was, well, I don't know, Mabel, what do you want me to do? And he just kind of whipped up a little braid and goes, here, how's that? And, uh, and so how long we, ago was that? That had to be 25 years ago when this was first Well, met. so this is a clear example. If you, if you want vines and you're thinking, I really would love to get into vines, but I don't have a lot of space or I don't know what to do with them. One of the things for a lot of vines you can do is just turn them into a tree-formed item and exactly just easy right. to prune, yep. take care of. 
Well, that's what encourages all the flowers. When you're pruning the, you know, I'd say June is, the end of June, July is pretty much a good time to prune back all that foliage that's yeah. overgrown six, eight foot, and you'll get blooms every year. And that, that's absolutely beautiful. Well, yep. you know, there are so many vines available at garden centers, and I can't think of a better place to come on out up here to Woodland, Washington, to Zagawas. Talk to them about the vines that would work best for you. Go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks, Always William. a pleasure, my friend. Yep. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. Gardening makes for wonderful family time. Whether it's updating your landscape or planting a veggie garden, at Portland Nursery, our great selection and staff of professionals can help ensure your family's success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. Do you want a garden more of the year? Then look no further than the Greenhouse Catalog. Our spacious Solex greenhouses provide plenty of room to start hundreds of plants. Get a jump on your spring garden and continue harvesting long after the first frost. Extend your growing season and enjoy mouth-watering tomatoes and fresh vegetables with Solex. Come see us in Salem for factory direct discounts. Find out more at GreenhouseCatalog.com. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. Go a little crazy in your garden this spring. This week, our Crazy Tunia Petunias are four for $10 for our four inch rounds. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. Subaru Garden Days are here again. Join us at Capital Subaru in Salem for a day filled with fun, plants, and garden art. There will be free seeds, plants, and hot dogs. You could win a $100 gift card from Al's Garden Center or a $50 gift card from Drake 7Ds. See you at Subaru Garden Days. Celebrate a spring tradition. Visit the Holda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. Tour Holda's Victorian home and gift shop. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. Well, there is something new at Bauman's Farm and Garden. I'm with Christine, and Christine, you are the cider maker here. I am the cider maker. And really, it is a tradition at Bauman's to make regular cider. I mean, during the fall, we come for all the fall festival, and we have delicious cider. But you've, or you've made it fermented now for the adult beverage. That's right. That's right. And so, and then you were telling me that actually there's a long history of cider, hard cider here about Grandpa. So if you could tell us about Great Grandpa. So as I have asked around the family for why aren't we making hard cider gosh i think we're missing the boat guys that's where the real fun is my dad shared with me a story of my great grandpa stephen who also lived on the farm and you know was an orchardist and raised apples he would make hard cider in the barn and so the kind of the tradition of it is that you take the fresh pressed cider and you know give the kids their fresh pressed sweet juice and you put the rest in barrels in the barn so he had a Right up by the bridge in the barn, you would turn left and you would see four barrels of hard cider percolating through winter, and then uh, that's what you enjoyed. And the neighbors would come oh, and fun. have a pint of cider with Great Grandpa Stephen. And uh, I think my dad was a touch young to really enjoy mm. it, but I, I have a feeling from the stories he shared that well, you know he might have had a bit. taste, <laughs> just a little bit. Well, it's great that that's in your blood. I mean, the Baumans have such lovely things here. I mean, you yes. have such wonderful produce, wonderful plants and everything. And for you to come in, you know, as the cousin of the family, to come in and say, let's do this. Yeah. What a wonderful idea. So you actually have a little tap room here in the store. We do. I'm very pleased. It's been a, a very exciting 
kind of adventure into this and people have loved it. That's people it. love being able to grab a pint and then pick up their produce and have a donut and do some <laughs> shopping. So how many do you make this time of year? How many ciders? Well, so far we have on tap here four different ciders. We have a Clyde's Dry named after so is that this Ryan's one? and my grandpa. Aww. And so that's a dry cider and um, has some crab apples. So it's got some great uh, tannic intensity there. And then Stephen's Sweet named okay. after our great grandfather who was the early orchardist on the farm and that is um, just back sweetened with fresh apples from right that here on the farm oh. and that's what's so fun is being able to use whatever we have nice. and as much as possible you know even when we need a little honey for sweetening we get it from the bees right here on the farm oh, that's so remarkable very fortunate to have that access and then this is the obsidian blackberry which is um, kind of like a marion berry it's less known but it's a great tasting berry in the uh, early summer and then um, our logan berry is made from logan berries and and when, when I was a child, the Loganberry field was right there. And I remember, <laughs> you know, Loganberries are a soft berry. And so if you were going to be in a berry fight with your cousins, <laughs> that would kind of be your berry of choice because the blackberry can really hurt when, you know, but a Logan is just the right effect that squish as it hits you. Uh, but a much better use of this berry to make a oh, hard cider. Oh, all right. <laughs> we don't fight with those much anymore. Well, I love that you can come right up to the tap here in the store and you could really try all these and maybe you could take a growler home or a you pint home. You can take home. a growler or a mini growler. You can have a pint right here in the store. So people can bring their growlers and fill them. So is there a special order to taste these? Do we want to do it some way that it's better for our palate to enjoy them? So in general, um, we start with the dry and then we, we get sweeter and sweeter. And then if you have, you know, extravagant or kind of <laughs> it, like flavors that we add, like the berries, the Logan is very intense. You wouldn't necessarily want to do that before okay, you have sure. the dry. So here we do a tasting flight and these flavors will change. You know, I'm watching the rhubarb grow oh, ripe and I'm like, I can't wait to get that rhubarb into my glass. And, you know, I'm, I'm working on whatever comes ripe. So as you know, I've got eight taps to fill here Whoa. and we'll do it as the season progresses. And uh, so that's a lot of fun. And so that'll certainly change. But as you come into the store here, you can have a tasting flight and get just a little taste of each. Uh, and it's a lot of fun uh, to, to just like see what's in season because that's certainly my intent is to reflect back the the bounty and the variety that's here at Bowman Farms. Ah, so really that's a hook to get you in here at any season of the year. So you want to try your, your flight and see what the seasonal ones are and then you could also get a pint or a glass or a growler to take home. And where can we find out all about the flavors and what you're doing every every couple weeks or so? So certainly there, you can link to it from the Bauman Farms website, and then we also have our own website separate we, we link to that uh, is Bauman Cider, B-A-U-M-A-N-S, -A Cider. And we'll always have available, you know, what's on tap here, what's, uh, what's out in the community. We're in oh, restaurants wonderful. and tap rooms oh, all great. over Portland metro area and coming in Salem. So, so that's how you could find out the latest information. Where are we? When can you get us? So. Uh, uh, well, you really have to come out to Bowman's Farm and Garden and to the original store and come and see what you can get in hard ciders. Well, thanks so much and happy fermenting. Wonderful. Thank <laughs> you. We want to thank Garden Gallery Ironworks for letting us hang out today. And don't forget, next Saturday is their big event for Mother's Day weekend. You can have a great time and maybe take one of these raised beds home for a gift for mom. And if you have any questions about today's show, or if you would like to watch the whole episode over again, go to Gardentime.tv and click on the This Week link. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Don't you just love all the things inside Garden Time magazine? So much great information about gardening. I do, William. There's new plants, adventures, recipes, local gardeners, home tips. And it's free, right in your email. But there's two things you left out. What's that? <laughs> you and me. <laughs> we write some of the articles and get to share our gardening knowledge. Of course, I should have. William, where did you go? Right here, Judy. 
You'll find both of us every month in Garden Time Magazine. Sign up for your free subscription on the Garden Time website. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.